All right, we continue right here on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Jason Anderson with you, rolling along, heading up until 2 o'clock. Time to talk a little baseball, and uh, from a different angle, you know, we got the World Sur- the uh, the AL and NLCS going on right now, and the World Series coming up here soon. Uh, but uh, a little baseball from a maybe grassroots, not necessarily barnstorming, but uh, town teams, and looking back to uh, baseball, the roots really of that, and, and uh, here uh, in Kansas and some of those roots as well, there's a really awesome movie documentary that's out there on Amazon Prime. You can check that out uh, other places as well. It's called uh, Town Teams Bigger Than Baseball on uh, DHTV. Joining us now is Mark Honer, executive producer of DHTV, and also Warren Martin, who is the executive uh, director of Kansas Strong, Kansas Oil and Natural Gas Products, uh, that's uh, in conjunction with this um, uh, project that's there. Guys, I want to welcome you to the show, and uh, I appreciate you joining us. I want to start with Mark real quick about the movie and the uh, film that's out there. Just sort of curious from your standpoint, um, the the motivation to... To, to, to do this movie, which I should pass along as well, is narrated by our own Curtis Siebold, who does a fantastic yeah. job. And yeah. also Peter Yates Enoch is a part of the uh, the show as well. And I liked when Peter Yates Enoch was talking about the teams brawling. That is right up Peter's alley for him to get into the conversation about teams fighting each other. Um, but sort of the motivation of, uh, you know, why to make this film to go as back, as far back to the roots of baseball throughout towns in, uh, in Kansas to get this, uh, this information out there because it's fascinating. Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. It was a passion project for me. Um, really, the the project, the film, was driven by a couple of things. One was, I am a big baseball fan, big fan of WHB also, by the way. <laughs> and um, um, in uh, the 2014 run of the World Series, um, you know, I sort of jumped on the Royals bandwagon early on when they started picking up some good players. And so I um, that season ended the way it did, and I... I spent the winter of 2014 really doing almost all the research for the film, which was pretty extensive. Um, I was actually researching a film about the oil boom in southeast Kansas, which is where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in a, um, in, uh, a little township outside of El Dorado, and we had always heard about my school was Oil Hill, which was one of the teams we ended up featuring in the film. And... As I was doing research on the oil business, what I kept getting sucked into these photos of these old, these old photos of these uh, town teams, these teams that were sprouted up all over the state. And you know, as I started looking into it more and more and more, I learned that um, you know, there's like, I think from 1910 to 1920, we did a sort of an unofficial survey. There was maybe 400 town teams. It was just, it was sort of what drove. The history and the uh, the enthusiasm and um, and the excitement of these little towns and uh, it just sort of captured my imagination and then and that's when I started uh, sort of running with the project. What is it? Uh, what is the project? Then, if you want to explain to people what the documentary is and uh, some of the things that they'll find out about um, what went on in these town teams, uh, that that's the first part of the question. The second part would be. Um, uh, you know, is it was this all over the country, or was this so prevalent in in our backyard uh, throughout the state of Kansas? You know, the Northeast is known for sort of where baseball began, but there were certain pockets of the country where it really exploded, and the Midwest was one of them. The game was sort of brought to learn by a lot of these uh, soldiers, Civil War soldiers from the Midwest, from Kansas, Missouri, um, and elsewhere, and when they played it. Um, on Civil War battlefields whenever they weren't fighting each other. And, um, I mean, obviously, Confederates versus Confederates, and <laughs> Union versus Union. But um, when they came home, they started they started their own teams. And so the Northeast was a big pocket of them, California, Texas, uh, the textile leagues down in the Southeast. But the Midwest was, I mean, it, it caught fire really quickly in the Midwest and in Kansas specifically. You know, I want to bring in uh, Warren to the conversation. Warren Martin, executive director of Kansas Strong and also uh, Kansas Oil and Natural Gas Products. He talked about how he was, uh, Mark that is, was researching a film and uh, kept coming back to these towns and this baseball. Uh, I would guess that you don't find that to be much of a surprise when he was researching one part of it, but yet baseball was so uh, closely tied to that. No, uh, and the actual the boom that he was talking about right there was the first mid-continental oil boom that took place. 
And so what you had happen was, is at that point in time, there was not electricity that was going to any of these um, oil fields that were out there. So you had steam engines, and steam engines are very high demand in manpower, 24 hours a day. And so what you had was you had lease towns that began popping up all over, started in El Dorado, began spreading around throughout the entire state of Kansas, and every one of these lease towns would be well, like Oil Hill, where uh, Mark was talking about right there, is the largest lease town in history. It had 3,500 people that lived in this lease town that were seeking their own identity. And so these people were living in these communities that were thrown together, and baseball was something that they could surround themselves around um, as a common, you know, people coming from all different diverse backgrounds that came together, that was one thing that could bring them all together. But these lease towns popped up all over the state to run the oil fields and to pump the oil out of the ground. And so it was a, it was a vital part of those uh, communities that were popping up all over the place. Um, and Oil Hill, where Mark went, that's where my granddaughter goes. That's where my uh, uh, daughter graduated from that school district. And, you know, it built a community that persists to today. While the t lease town itself is no longer there, and a lot of these lease towns uh, that had these teams are no longer there, they dynamically impacted the state as a whole. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's sort of interesting, too, because I, I like to go back and, and look at some of the things and, and how things started and where we are today and, and just uh, how things were built and not knowing back then when they were just sitting around playing baseball and the rivalries between the town that were sort of decided by whose team won the game in baseball. Our town's better than yours because we beat you in a game of baseball, uh, which is sort of, it's a, you know what, and, and, it, and it starts from there. And Mark or Warren, you guys can weigh in on this. It starts from there. But, but, but now today we do the same thing. We do it with states. We do it with colleges. We do it Manhattan v. Lawrence. We do it Columbia v. Manhattan and Lawrence. We do it Auburn v. You know, uh, Tuscaloosa, on down the line, Clemson v. You know, Columbia, South Carolina. It's our town's better than yours because we beat you at a sport. We think of now um, that, hey, the county seat is the county seat in, in any given uh, uh, county, in any given county, that city. Uh, but baseball was part of the formula for, you know, what was the most progressive city? What was the city that was growing the most? Um, those were the cities that got the railroad line to go through. Those were the cities that got the county seat. They got the high school. I mean, it's just uh, very similar to today, but those things weren't established yet. And these town teams were just part of the bragging rights and the boosterism and sort of the way to promote uh, your town um, over the other towns. So that, and it would really had a, a huge cultural and economic impact, uh, not, a, you know, uh, especially in these oil towns or these towns that sort of grew up out of nothing because of the oil industry. Warren, would you say, it, in, when you talk about the uh, the oil industry, Mark, but Warren, would you say that towns survived based on how good their baseball team was to a certain degree? Uh, absolutely. To some degree, the, the towns, uh, what Mark says is absolutely true. It was a, it was a bellwether of, of how good your town is doing by what kind of team that you could put on the field. It drew attention to you. And so, like what I was talking about, Oil Hill being the largest uh, uh, least town in the world in world history, uh, came to 3,500 people. Well, at the same time, when Oil, Oil Hill started, that lease town started, the city of El Dorado uh, was only a town of about 3,500 people. And while Oil Hill grew to a town of 3,500 people, El Dorado, and during that same period, grew to a town of 18,500 people. And uh, El Dorado has a deep history in baseball, the McDonald Stadium and, and just the, the, the there's all kinds of history that goes along with that. And what Mark is saying is is the difference between Oil Hill and El Dorado, because Oil Hill's not there anymore and El Dorado is, is El Dorado got the uh, train lines that came through it. El Dorado was not a lease town, where a lease town people don't own the land that they're living on. They are leasing it. Uh, while they work in that field. And so people had more permanent roots in El Dorado. And you go down to uh, that stadium there in El Dorado, and it's a phenomenal legacy of baseball history here in the state. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it is a fascinating watch, and, and uh, you guys can go and check that out. It is called Town Teams Bigger Than Baseball. It's about 40, 42 minutes or so. It's an easy watch. It's uh, informational. It's fun. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really 
uh, interesting to learn and go back and see some of those things that uh, how the the town was decided. And I also thought it was kind of interesting that um, the workers, like the bosses, would understand that okay, if I let these guys play baseball before they come to work, then they're actually better <laughs> workers. Why is that? That's weird. I'm letting them play a game. No, no, no. They should be working. And they found out that production right. was actually increased because hey, happy workers typically will be willing to work a little more. Yeah. Yeah, the work weeks were long back then, um, you know, six to eight, six day work weeks, sometimes 60, 65 hours a week. So wow. these guys should have been exhausted. Yeah, um, that's right. They're playing they baseball and then they're working. <laughs> I, and they, they just loved it so much. Yeah. And it, you know, you, you know how it is when you get the passion. You know, the, the games were exciting. They were sort of the social media of their time, really. But it was gambling and, you know, fights would break out. Break out. There's one example of a story in, um, in southeast Kansas where there's a it was a fight that broke out, and they threw the entire you know team in jail <laughs> after the fight. They couldn't right. finish the game, but um, oh. it was it was exciting, and the oil industry definitely uh, drove it in this state. By uh, it, it definitely drove that uh, the, the the process of the town teams uh, where, growing. Where can people watch the video? Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime, um, and so that's a you know a. It's a it's a cheap rent if you don't have Prime, but if you have Prime, it's uh, it's it's for free, so to speak. Um, and uh, you know, there's trailers and there's coverage of it on on yeah. you know Google and what have you. But it's pretty easy to. Find. Would you mind if I jumped in one more time? Absolutely, uh, go right ahead, more. Warren. Yeah, I want to pick up on what Mark was talking about there and what you were talking about, and the idea that you know uh, they worked so many hours and then they were able to go out and play baseball. You know, people hadn't changed much over time. You know, if you go to Google or if you go to any of those major industries today, they still have playrooms. They have places where people are able to, uh, because they found that when people are able to enjoy themselves at work a little bit, they do tend to work a little harder. But more importantly, what they did during that time is is extraordinary. They began producing a product that continues to uh, inspire sports today. Uh, One of the biggest things that has come from that boom was petrochemicals that came from that boom. Seren came from that. How about that? It, Seren also came that, from uh, that boom. Who yeah, knew? <laughs> it, and it provides all of the helmets. It provides the AstroTurf. It provides the uniforms. It provides the shoes. It, it's the synthetic fibers that go into just about everything that we look at today, the way we know what baseball is today, the way we know football is today, basketball is today. It looks the way it does because it's dependent upon those petrochemicals that those town team players were producing way back then. No, it, it's really cool. And, again, Curtis Seabolt does the narration for it, which is really uh, cool. So people that would know Curtis Seabolt and get an opportunity. He's talked about the different things that he's narrated, uh, different voice work. If people haven't got an opportunity to hear him, uh, even from that standpoint, it's uh, it's interesting just in uh, support of uh, Curtis. But this is really cool, and you get an opportunity to see. Uh, and I was you know, taken aback as to how tied in the sort of oil and gas across the state was to – kind of the foundation of where sports are right now and the impact that it had in the history of Kansas and, and, and really sports as well. So it's a really interesting watch. Go to uh, Amazon Prime and check that out. Warren Martin, Executive Director of uh, Kansas Strong, Kansas Oil and Natural Gas Products, and Mark Honer, the Executive uh, Producer with DHTV. Again, it's called Town Teams Bigger Than Baseball. It's really cool if you're sitting around maybe watching the ALCS, NLCS Cool. I really want to thank you guys for joining us today because I love the uh, I love the movie I love the piece and it's really cool. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, taking some time out today and uh, joining us. Thank you, thank you for having us.